What is it you want to start? Here, we're starting already. What do you want to say? That's what I said. Huh? What is it? Start it now. Come on, come on. They're waiting. We're waiting. Come on. <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Polly. <laughs> How are you this morning? Today is the day of all souls. Souls Day, Chevelle is saying it's November 2nd. And the gospel comes from St. John, chapter 6, verses 37 to 40. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life. And I shall raise him on the last day. This is the will of my Father. What is that will of the Father? That we, his children, all go to heaven. Okay? And that's what our Lord is saying here. Right? That everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life. That eternal life is Life with God in heaven forever. Right? And in the catechism, how is this, how is this uh, point uh, illustrated? How, is the catechism, how does the catechism remind us of this purpose of why we were created? Yeah, with the question, why did God make you? God made me to know to love, to serve Him, and to be happy with Him. Okay, so God made me to know, love, and serve Him, and to be happy with him in heaven forever, right? That's exactly what our Lord is saying here, right? That whoever the Father has given him, right? He will um, see to it. Jesus will see to it that we get the, the reward that we deserve, okay? As children of God, the reward that was promised to us to be eternally happy with God in heaven. But of course, that is assuming, that is assuming that we are faithful, that we become faithful to our calling, to our baptismal calling, that we be faithful to God, right? And that at the end of our lives, we will merit that reward. That when we meet Jesus at the end of our lives in the particular judgment, when we all die, there will be a particular judgment. Oh, God bless you. There will be a particular judgment where we will stand by the throne of Jesus, okay, and um, we will be judged for the way we lived our lives on earth. And if uh, we are found worthy to um, spend eternity with God in heaven, then we will receive that crown, which the saints received. Yesterday, we commemorated the Day of the Saints, right? And that is, the, that is the goal. The goal is holiness. The goal is for us to be holy because only holy people, only saintly people get to heaven. We don't have to be declared by the church or canonized as saints. That is not the objective. The objective is to go to heaven. Whether the church or some people in the church would remember and canonize us, and use our lives to as an example to emulate uh, to be emulated by others that is secondary that is that is in fact not going to add anything to our glory in heaven anymore that is just for the emulation of the people we have left behind right but for us the goal is heaven the goal is to be in heaven forever with Jesus. And today is All Souls Day. So we commemorate all of our faithful departed who have gone before us and hopefully have uh, been faithful. That's why we call them faithful 
departed, who have been faithful, and hopefully are in heaven. Right? But, um, but you see, not everybody goes to heaven straight. Not everybody goes to heaven straight. But in God's mercy, in God's mercy, He has provided for a mechanism, for a way by which um, uh, those of us who might die with some remnants of uh, sin would have a way to purify ourselves, would have a way to be completely clean before we face God in heaven. And that mechanism, or that place rather, where we would uh, purify ourselves is called Purgatory. Purgatory. Very good, Chevelle. <laughs> Very good. Purgatory. So Purgatory is a real uh, place of, uh, of purification. Okay? It's a state, a situation of purification. And if you recall, we just celebrated the, uh, the, um, the Feast of Fatima, right? Where... Um, where uh, Our Lady showed hell to the three children. Okay? And, uh, well, purgatory is not quite hell, because it is not. It is not a condemnation forever. But it uh, is spoken of also as a place of um, fire that, uh, that um, purifies the soul. That image of fire uh, is... is um, is a metaphor okay, uh, for purification okay? because that is the way that you uh, that you purify many things even even metals and things like that get purified uh, with fire okay and the catechism teaches us purgatory uh, is real the church gives the name purgatory to this final purification of the elect as for certain lesser faults we must believe that before the final judgment, there is a purifying fire. Okay? There is a purifying fire. Okay. Every sin, even venial, entails an unhealthy attachment to creatures, which must be purified either here on earth or after death in the state called purgatory. You see, every sin no matter how small, is an indication that we have some attachment to creatures, to things of this world, that we are not completely attached to God. Okay? We are either attached to our own selfishness, attached to our own pleasures, or attached to other things and other people. Okay? Now those attachments, we cannot have those attachments in heaven. When we go to heaven, we should be free from the shackles of Anything that binds us to any earthly goods or to any earthly pleasures or any earthly form of satisfaction. The only real thing that should satisfy our souls is God. So the more attached we are with God, the less attached we are with material things of this world. But if we die with some of those attachments, no matter how little, we, need, we cannot face God. We are not pure enough to face God. So in God's mercy, He has provided a, a clearing house, so to speak. He has provided a laundry room for us <laughs> to, be, to be washed off from those impurities. Okay? And that place is purgatory. Now, uh, so not everybody who dies immediately goes to heaven or immediately... Uh, uh, gets to see God. Okay? Some of them, some of us, might have to pass through purgatory. Now, who are those souls? What are those, what do we call those souls who are in purgatory? The, the church, okay? the community of God, is, uh, is categorized in three parts, so to speak, okay? for lack of a better term, in three parts. Okay? Those are those who are already in heaven. That's what you call the church triumphant. They are already victorious. They are the saints. They have gone to heaven. The ones who are in purgatory are what you call the church suffering. Okay? 
because they are there to suffer for their sins. They're there to purify themselves from their sins. And we who are still on earth, we who are still on earth, who are still struggling against sin and who are still struggling to become saints, we are called the church militant. Militant, like soldiers, like an army. Because we are fighting against the devil. We're fighting against our evil tendencies. We want to win a war. We are on earth because we are trying to win the war for heaven. We are trying to win the prize of heaven. And we, that's why we are called the church militant. Now, it is our obligation, being the church militant, not only to struggle for our own selves, but also to pray for the church militant suffering that is what we call the communion of the saints there is unity com union unity with okay, the others unity with the others so we only we communion of the saints includes them we pray for them so that because because in the because they cannot anymore merit grace we who are here on earth we can merit grace by our good acts by our sacrifices by our struggles by our by by going to the sacraments we merit grace we can ask grace we can we can uh, be given grace by god to help us in our spiritual struggles to help us in our journey to heaven but the ones in purgatory they don't they cannot merit grace anymore their their, their time for meriting grace which is here on earth is done okay so the only way the only way that they can be helped is for us to help them. We are the ones now who are supposed to pray for them, to help them merit grace. Otherwise, they will just serve time. Eh? If nobody prays for them, well, they will serve time in purgatory. It's like serving time in jail. Right? If nobody bails out that person, well, they have to serve time in jail. The analogy is something like that, right? Uh, if we don't pray for the souls in purgatory, nothing will expedite their going to heaven. They will just have to serve their time in purgatory. But we can help them. We can help them through our prayers. And we can gain indulgences for them on their behalf. Okay? And that is why we have a very serious obligation to, uh, to pray for the souls in purgatory. And praying for the souls in purgatory is a spiritual work of mercy remember how we were talking about the spiritual works of mercy not too long ago right spiritual works of mercy and corporal works of mercy so praying for the souls in purgatory is one of those spiritual works of mercy now what are the good things that we can practice okay what are the best uh, uh, catholic best practices that we can use and we can we can do for the souls in purgatory number one is offer masses Okay. offer masses for the souls in purgatory and you can mention uh, particular people okay particular people you know uh it's funny how uh it's funny how when you attend a funeral okay um almost everybody is canonized as a saint already by those who eulogize them in in uh in funerals right they speak of all the virtues all the good things that this person has done well, you know, that's very nice. That's very nice. That's how the dead person is being remembered. But you know what? Sometimes, sometimes, at least to me, it appears like some people uh, would already canonize their dead and, and proclaim them as saints. Okay? Uh, that is dangerous. That is presumption. That is dangerous. Right? Um, it is better to err on the side of... Uh, on the side of um, you know uh, purgatory uh, rather than to uh, presume that they're in heaven because that way we forget about them oh oh he's very he's a very good person he must be in heaven period forgot about him already i only remember him during his anniversary or during his birthday see well that is not nice that is not nice we should never presume that anybody is in heaven unless we have clear proof that he or she is in fact in heaven right so because of that is a very good uh, habit to keep praying for our dead especially our dead relatives and the and people that you remember to pray for them at mass 
Yeah? That is why you see uh, after the gospel and after the homily, when the priest says intentions, yeah? we sometimes mention some people, some dead people that we remember at Mass. Right? And actually, in the liturgy, in the liturgy, there is always a place there, okay, after the uh, consecration where we remember the dead. We pray for the living and the dead. It's always there in the Mass. But many times we skip it. Many times we forget. Many times we are oblivious of the fact that the Mass, the Mass, at Mass rather, we always pray for the dead. Now, that is a good practice we ourselves can do without having to wait for that part of the Mass or, you know, it's it, to offer the Mass for the dead. See? Me, I already have my litany. I have my list, right? Beginning from Grandma Lely, okay? And then uh, and then Grandpa Oscar, and then Pia, and then uh, Kuya Rod, and then uh, my grandparents, see? one by one. I already have that litany. I have it memorized, see? And I mention all of those names, see? And, uh, and, and just to help me remember it, I mentioned them right there by the offertory, before the offertory, where there is a lull, right? I already make that intention in me to offer the Mass for all of those souls that, uh, that have passed. Okay? So, let us remember to pray. Every day we go to Mass, so we can pray for our dead every day. And that's the way we're going to help them inch a little bit closer to heaven every day. Okay? Offer Mass. Number two. Uh, uh, second thing we can do, especially during this time of uh, November, between today, between today until November 8. So for eight days, the first week of November, is a good, it's a good practice to visit a cemetery and there pray for the dead. Now, if we do that, we gain a plenary indulgence, not for ourselves, but for the dead. Okay? Yes, we can gain a plenary indulgence. Not for you, Mia, sorry. <laughs> but we gain a plenary indulgence for the dead. And could you just imagine? Yeah? It's like a lottery. Uh, of course, we have no theological basis for this. But I'm just imagining okay, that maybe all the souls in purgatory are there. And then people are people on earth, the church militant, are praying in cemeteries. right? And, and, and Jesus is like, say, like a lottery. Say, okay, let's see. Who's going to catch this plenary indulgence now? Boop, 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 boop. And then, you know, many, many souls go to heaven. Many, many, many souls go to heaven. Yeah. So the church, that's how the church is allotting our indulgences up to November 8th. So we have to go one of these days. Okay. Okay. We'll, go one, we'll go one of these days. Okay. So, and the other way, number three. Number three practice is the rosaries. See the rosaries. Even we do it every day also. When we pray the rosaries, we mention our dead. Right? So let us remember uh, our dead in the rosary. And as I always say, as I always say about praying for the dead, let us pray for our grandparents. Our grandparents are, are, are some of those that we tend to forget to pray for. Let us remember to pray for our grandparents by name. Eh? By name, since we are since we are two generations removed from them, many times, many times we forget about our grandparents. So, um, I have a very special devotion to. That's a very special devotion I have, praying for my own grandparents. So, uh, let us remember that. Now, now, um, well, since we're talking about the dead and about death, okay. Uh, Things to keep in mind also if we happen to be near a person who might be dying. Okay? If, we are, if we happen to be able to accompany a person who might be dying. Okay? Three things to do. Uh, number one, okay, if you can, pray with that person. Pray with that person. Very closely pray with that person. Pray the rosaries and pray many acts of contrition. Because for a dying person, for a dying person, it's, it is said that the devil is more active at the time a person is dying. Because up to the last minute, the devil wants that soul in hell. Okay? And the devil can tempt that soul to, into despair. Into despair. Okay? At the very last moment. Why? Because, you know, the person is weak. Physically weak. And could also be mentally weak. 
and, and, and everything is failing, everything in him is failing, at that point, the devil is very active, very active. So we have to help that person die by praying into his ear, into his ear. Many rosaries, Hail Marys, and acts of contrition to help him or her uh, go. Okay. Number two, what else? Get a priest. Get a priest to give the last sacraments, the last rites. Okay. Get a priest. That is something that you uh, 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 should not forget to do. Okay. And number three, number three, when that person finally passes. Remember to pray for that person every day. Every day, every day, every day. Okay? Pray for that person. Especially if you had that privilege of being that close to that person, that only means that there must have been some special relationship with you and that person. So pray for that person every day. Okay? So now you know what to do when I'm dying. Okay? <laughs> when we are dying, okay? help me or help mommy or help anybody dying by praying, praying, praying. Many acts of contrition and rosaries and Hail Marys. And number two, don't forget to call a priest. I don't care what you do, but just get a priest. Okay? You have to move heaven and earth and do everything in your power to get a priest to do the last sacraments, do the last rites. Papa, okay. Papa, and you have to go and there. well, we don't. We, what if he doesn't make it there yet, and I have to go already? You have to call a priest. And number three, please pray, pray every day. Is that is the way we will help our souls and the souls of the faithful departed to go to heaven? Okay, okay, we're over time already, folks. Have a good day today. Remember to pray for the dead and make use of this November. Very well to pray for our faithful departed. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.